Southwestern family of companies welcomes you to the Action Catalyst. Each week, our diversely and amazingly accomplished guests share their insights and inspirations to help us ignite our own. So let's invest attention together to breathe, to reflect and refocus, and decisively defeat that voice we call Mr. Mediocrity. Then let's enjoy moving forward to make a positive difference in our world. On this special episode, host Dan Moore is joined by a close colleague from the Southwestern family of companies with a strong personal connection to the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. From a poor upbringing in his native Moldova, to great successes in athletics and business, to having to flee his home at the outbreak of the current war, he shares his unique experiences and the determination and will of the people of Moldova. We hope you enjoy. Well, I am delighted to spend some time today with my old friend, Pasha Aliabov. He goes by Pavel, but Pasha is the term of endearment that we all appreciate so much and use whenever we refer to this great, great young man. So Pasha, welcome to the Action Catalyst and welcome to Southwestern Family of Podcasts. Thank you, Dan. It's an honor being here. It's an honor spending time with you, my friend. I wonder if you could maybe uh, back us up to the very beginning. I know you were born at a very early age. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were born just about the time that the Soviet Union was collapsing and uh, Moldova became an independent country. And share with us some of the most important things that happened in your early life and in your schooling that helped put you on the path to where you are today. Absolutely. I was born in 1989, right before the collapse of the Soviet Union. And I remember vividly how when I was about five or six, we will go with my mom and stand in queues of about a couple hours at least to get baby food for my younger siblings. Outside it was freezing cold and we will wait in queues to get that food. Um, growing up in Moldova, which is one of the 15 post-Soviet Union republics, it was an experience for sure because we are the poorest country in Europe, unfortunately, and we had so many governments changing. One of the clear memories of my childhood is in the 90s across, especially like Russia, Ukraine, Moldova, Azerbaijan, Armenia, there was a lot of crime. Criminals were actually the unofficial rulers of the country. Hmm. They will just kidnap people right off the street. The level, level of corruption was extremely high. It's still high, but back then it was just enormous. So even with that, though, growing up in a neighborhood where, like in my neighborhood, about 30% of neighbors, they went at some point to jail for certain crimes. And we even have our cemetery is one of the biggest in Europe, just graves of young men who were killed because of the criminal activity. They were just murdered. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I have two younger siblings, my sister and my brother, and my mom and my dad got divorced when I was five. So we're five people. It was my grandma, my mom, my grandpa who passed away in 1996. So realistically, it was just five of us, three kids, mom and grandma. And my, my father probably did his best to help us. Unfortunately, he was able to provide just $100 a month for all of us to live on. And when people say poor, I would say we're below, we were below poor. Meat as food was on our table just for celebrations and holidays. All the rest was beans, rice. My mom will basically, she was always telling us that you're not gonna get any new clothes or shoes or toys. Only thing I will spend money on is your education your extracurricular activities and your self-development. We've been doing dancing. Uh, she put me into swimming when I was 15. You're being a little bit modest, Pasha, about your swimming. Many times you were a national champion in swimming. Junior national champion, yes. Yes, sir. That, that happened a couple of times. And, and it was fun. Being honest, swimming gave a lot more than just health. It taught patience. It taught teamwork. It taught me how to you know, endure all the challenges. and. What is really important is it teaches you discipline, all the things that you're doing in order to achieve your goals. And I got so exhausted. I couldn't even raise my hands. So I literally had to use my forehead to ring the doorbell. And my mom was feeding me with a spoon how exhausted I was. There were some fun times. 
And I know that swimming has continued to be an important part of your life. In fact, everyone, we're recording this while Pasha is going to be competing in a master's level swimming tournament this weekend. Yes, sir. Now, also, you developed a great deal of academic expertise. You got really interested in what is called informatics or information technology, ended up with a master's degree in that field. Can you tell us a bit about how all that came about? It was my last year of university and our dad will visit. He, he was a great man. And, you know, the year when I was graduating and we sat down and he asked me, like, what are your plans further out? And I was like, yeah, I'm either going to be an economist or I will be a lawyer because those were the only two professions that were considered prestigious back then. And I told him that, you know, I see myself delivering presentations to like big CEOs all over the world or I'm, I'm seeing myself, you know, winning all these great cases in court. And he told me, no, that's not, that's exactly what I thought. Well, that's not how reality is. He goes like, are you planning, do you like paperwork? Because that's what you will be doing as a, in both cases for the first, at least five years of your life. And I was like, okay, that's probably not how I imagined that. And said, I love math and I love computers. And he goes like, well, why wouldn't you consider going into a math, getting a math degree with emphasis in computer science? That's what I applied for. And being honest, was one of the best advices he ever gave me. Hmm. Well, I'd say that advice is part of the reason you have the role you have right now with our family of companies. Pavla is our information technology and sales liaison, connecting his two worlds of expertise in a beautiful, beautiful way. How did you get involved with Southwestern Advantage? <laughs> That's a really funny story because since I was eight, every summer, our mom will send us to a children's camp to spend our time with our peers for the basically three months if we get lucky. After turning 18, I couldn't be a part of the children's camp as a kid. So I decided to be a counselor at the children's camp. And it was amazing, like taking care of those kids. It was one of the best times of my life. However, in my sophomore year of college, um, my best friend, he have been to the States with a program called Work and Travel. So we went for a walk. It was May. And he goes like, so what are your plans for the summer? He goes like, why don't you try to go to the US with me? And I was like, well, I don't speak any English at all. <laughs> and B, I don't have money for that. <laughs> so he goes like, well, there is this company that they offer like a promotion if you pay a full cost of the program just if you get visa. So we went there and the only jobs were available. It was lifeguarding, housekeeping, and this book selling program. And I remember clearly that I did not want to do any housekeeping because it would not develop my communication skills. I did not want to be a lifeguard because I was so sick of the swimming pool and spending three more months just sitting and watching the people in the pool was not my thing. And I've seen the books. I've seen the people who work there. I love the books. I was like, man, I wish I would had, I had something like that when I was a little kid. And basically I got selected at the end of May and got to the US with no English at all. But it did play out pretty well at the end of the day because that summer, how to work together with coachability really helped out to have a great summer. So how old were you when that happened? I was 21. And how did you do your first summer? Did you make enough money to cover your expenses? Yes. Wow. Which covered all, all the expenses. I bought a computer to got a computer for school and I helped start helping my family financially. So that summer was a life changing summer. Well, I'm sure of that. I want to fast forward to March of 2020. You and I had just spent some time together in Kazakhstan. What happened then? On March 7th, I flew to Uzbekistan for a quick trip. And a day before flying back to Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan completely closed any type of transportation communication with any other countries. So basically, I got stuck. And it's funny because the Uzbek government told the public that they're closing just for two weeks and those two weeks transformed into four months. <laughs> a long two weeks. Yes. I had to fly to the US for, you know, for the new role at Southwestern. And literally the day when I got my passport back with my visa and stuff, 
our government closed completely the airport because of the state of war. And I don't want to say Southwest and save my life, but I kind of did quite a few times because if it wouldn't be for this role, if it wouldn't be for, for our company, I will not be in the U.S. right now. Mm-hmm. And just the tre- tremendous leadership and friendships that were built over the years are, you know, they, they're paying off. I'm enjoying every single bit of it. It has been a great, great experience so far. If we as a family of companies use all of our resources as a one whole family of companies instead of having separate companies, Mm -hmm. we can leverage our potential so much. That's very, very true. Yeah, it has been a blessing. Well, Pasha, backing up the lens again into the world stage for people that have been following the conflict in Ukraine, there's increasing concern about your home country, Moldova, uh, a region that has been contested called Transnistria that involves maybe increasing amounts of conflict, everything else. Can you just share your your reflections on maybe how you try to keep calm, knowing that your family may be right in the line of fire? So, yeah, it's, it is it is difficult. I'm not going to lie. It's very concerning and it's very difficult. Uh, it probably going to sound a little bit harsh, but I feel like we've been so ignorant all this time. Like whenever the wars were in Iraq or Afghanistan or any other place, yes, we did care. We did. It was very concerning for everybody, but it was like, eh, it's not happening here. It's a very different story when it happens in your hometown or home country or next to your home country because it directly affects your friends, your family, and everybody that you care about. At the same time, there is an information war where where every country sends out messages that are convenient for them. And coming from a post-Soviet Union country, we've been under propaganda for years. And people, they heard, they've seen how the government was manipulating different news. And it still happens today. It happens on a daily basis. And I have friends and family in Ukraine, and I have friends and family in Russia. And what both sides are saying, it's completely different from what the news are showing what actually happens and stuff like that. And what is really scary is that civilians are suffering. Like this war takes over the whole Ukraine and probably will take over the whole Europe. And that's what is scary. They're trying to suck Moldova into the war. And people are just saying that, no, we will be, we'll stay neutral. We're not, we will try to stay away from that as far as we possibly can. But it's really scary because from Tiraspol, the, capital of Transnistria to my hometown, it's literally 45 minute drive. Unfortunately, war never brought any good to any country. And it's crazy to me to actually comprehend that there is a war happening in the 21st century. When the diplomacy is the highest it can ever be, it has ever been, there are so many channels that people can get their information from and still we have a war. At the end of the day, not those people who started the war will pay the price, are always regular people who will pay the price, unfortunately. And who are paying the price. I'd like to give a shout out to the people of Moldova because on a per capita income basis, Moldova is near the bottom of Europe, if not one of the lowest, but the generosity, the spirit, the heart, of the Moldovan people is so amazing. You yourself had a property there that you turned over for refugees to stay in. So thank you for that on the behalf of the peace-loving people of the world for your part in that. Thank you. Moldovan people open up their houses. They gave transportation. They gave money. They gave everything we could. And we still give and provide to Ukrainian refugees because those are our Slavic brothers and those are people who who are paying the price for something that it's not their fault in any way. So it's very scary and unfortunate. But we as as neighbors, as brothers, we are trying to provide Ukrainian people as much as we can. And we had over 15 refugees staying with my mom. They they had a place to crash for a couple of days. Uh, We try to do our best to provide to Ukrainian refugees as much as we can. Well, again, God bless you and your family for doing that. Pasha, because it makes all the difference in the world. 
So let me just say thank you so much for everything that you are, everything you do. We're honored to have you as part of the family of companies. And I know there's not any limit to the contribution you're going to bring to so many people continuing as you move on into the world. Thank you, Dan. It's my honor being here. And thank you all for what you guys have been doing and the whole Southwestern family companies. All the, our friends on the other side of the pond are working extremely hard to help those people out. Let's hear it for peace. Yes, sir. So thank you so much, Pasha Aliabov, for being with us. It's fantastic to have you on our, on our show today. Thank you, Dan. Have an awesome day. And for anyone wishing to provide relief for U.S. and international aid foundations supporting the Ukrainian people, visit southwestern.com for a list of organizations who provide for electronic donations. To the people of Ukraine, Southwestern is with you. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe. To stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Action Catalyst Podcast and Twitter at Catalyst underscore Action. Thanks for listening.